Okay. <clears throat> you can see this. Oh, look. Acoustic foam. Wow. Look at that wood frame around this. It's nice. So we got this thing, this dry erase board, from a big office building. It's like one of those ones where every company has like one floor and stuff. And I think it was on Craigslist. So we drove over there. This was in Washington State. And I think we got this thing for maybe 200 bucks. It was cheap for how big it is. Look how big it is. Damn. Damn, that is... Damn. Look how big this thing is. Okay, so the top right, I can read some of this to you because I know it's kind of... He doesn't have the best handwriting of all time. Pursuit of happiness. So he categorizes different aspects of his life on here. And this is kind of like organizing different parts of himself. So fix comprota, which is his cute way of saying fix computer. Um, find MIDI keyboard, start piano, something. Find new fishing spots, catch first fish. He did that, so he crossed it off. What a bouse. Um, some learn techniques and lures and targeting species. So he was a, a guy who liked to interest himself in a lot of different things. Personality-wise, the difference between the two of us, I tend to be really happy just grinding one thing, a whole bunch like streaming StarCraft like I do now. I don't get bored of that. Whereas he's the kind of person who seeks more variety in his life. So he, he wanted to develop some skills. He did play clarinet. And he was well versed in singing and musical theater. We actually met in the musical theater class at University of Texas at Dallas. That's where we became friends. So he's a very musical dude. It says job... Form a sound booth. That was actually my recommendation. He has a really good voice, or had a really good voice. And a lot of my manner of speaking and that kind of thing was directly as a result of practicing, just talking with him, because he was a really good conversationalist. And I told him that he should use one of the closets in his house, just put tons of acoustic foam all over the place, get a mic, and he could build basically a resume of stuff that he could pitch for voice acting work. I think he probably has a better radio voice than I do. He's a bass and I'm a baritone. I think note-wise he was about two whole steps lower than my voice. Find a mastery. Uh, start a self-teach of music theory. Play with Pulse Boy. I think that was... I don't know who Pulse Boy was. I don't know if that meant play a game with this person, or if that was a tool, or another artist. And then it points here to YouTube channel. And then he has YouTube requirements. Create account channel. Get a camera mic and get video editing software. I use Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing. What do you use? A retrospective of a person who is very close to Neuro. I would take that like four steps beyond and say, he was the number one most impactful person in making Neuro possible. So we did this. Can you see down here? I don't know what this says. 
This says information, creation, duty, and leisure, willpower, and purpose, and void. I think this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This might be related to this wheel. So the last time I visited him, I drew, I drew this, which is Eightfold Path. I think I had recently read some Buddhist stuff, and the Eightfold Path has eight different elements to it, and you're supposed to be able to address all of those kind of as a wheel turns. You address each spoke. So if you're trying to have a well-rounded life experience, you don't want to neglect any of them. So it may have been one of his like personal examples of picking eight or so things. That is only seven, though. And then here, what is this? He liked to doodle a lot, too. So I'm not sure what this is. This looks kind of like a... This looks kind of like a carrot to me. But I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. It's symbolism of something. Void formed by negative space of design. Full disclosure, he did... Um, he was a psychonaut, if anyone knows what that is. An explorer of the mind. He did imbibe a fair amount of different substances. Some of them were legal. <laughs> it looks like a torch to you. So this, I think, is weightlifting related. I don't know what exercise this was, but I would guess this is 25 to 35 pounds, four to six reps, and 15 to 20 pounds, and eight to 10 reps. He was a pretty fit guy overall. I would say about the same body type as me. He was usually a little bit behind in like strength and speed and stuff, but body size wise, he was about an inch or two shorter than me and maybe five pounds lighter, something like that. But he was also pretty lean. He kind of fell into the same category of the type of person who's more likely to forget to eat than to overeat. So he was always really lean when I knew him. Teach us some math. How much does a whiteboard that size cost? Depends on if it's used. I think if it's new, you're in the hundreds of dollars to maybe a thousand. This was used when we got it, so I think it was maybe 200 to 300 USD when we got it. this up here. <clears throat> what are you doing today? <clears throat> I think that plays into the be deliberate <clears throat> kind of point where a lot of days you kind of grind and you coast and you do the same thing you've always done. Sometimes that's okay. Like if you're low on energy, stuff is tough. That's going to happen. But there are a lot of days where you maybe have a little bit of extra energy. You could make some progress toward your goal, but sometimes you just coast and you chill and you don't actually make stuff happen. Yeah, whiteboards are pretty expensive. This says, you can see this one. Yeah, upper core and legs. So we worked out a bunch at UT Dallas. I was basically the team coach. And we had a group of about four guys who would lift together every Thursday. 
but we would usually have maybe another four to eight rotating guests of other students at the university who they wanted to get fit and stuff like that, but they also had no idea what to do in the weight room. So I would basically make four or so different sets, supersets of workouts, where you do maybe eight reps of one exercise, and then eight of a secondary exercise, and eight of a tertiary, and you repeat that for three. And once you do that, you move to the next station. So multiple stations of supersets, and of the group of people, we kind of have our sets of three to four. Because you want to have spotters for stuff like bench press and squat. I plus CCW class and licenses. I don't know what that is. Maybe someone who knows about programming or AI might know. I, I do know that there were a few different qualifications that he wanted. He got a general studies degree, but his dad worked in SQL Server database administration stuff and he ended up getting a job with him and moving pretty far along that track. He's really smart. I would say he's he's like the same IQ as me, but he has more of a builder's mind and I have more of a a fighter's mind where I kind of prefer to have one simple problem that I can basically punch into submission and be really fast about it. And he likes to think about building stuff from the ground up. So an example in the StarCraft scene, I would say is like Jack Attack. He had kind of a similar intelligence to Jack Attack, where he was really brilliant about building a solution from scratch in an elegant way. I don't have the patience for that. But I think on a pen and paper IQ test, we would be about the same score. Finance, cash flow, budget analysis, input, output, taxes. He was always like way behind on his taxes. So IRS was actively hunting him a lot. It was just one of those things. It's like, I should do this at some point, but it didn't get done. So he was kind of always behind. Which is bad because you end up bleeding a bunch of money off the back end. And you never really get on top of it. So it ends up being a big point of stress. Right. For me personally so far with the stream and stuff, I've been on time with all my taxes, but I haven't been planning ahead. So that's one of the things that's on my personal to-do list is to basically get a, a tax person who helps me like be ahead of the curve and whatnot. You all with the stream have been really good to me, so I haven't really had much to worry about financially lately. So I'm very appreciative of that. VO read the something trial amend. I have no idea what that is. PPM rent. I know what rent is. I don't know what PPM is. I do know that he was a very generous kind of guy, kind of to the point of self injury where if people were in a tough spot and they had something going on, he would just send them a huge chunk of money when he wasn't on top of his taxes. So that was like a, a personality thing. Parts per million, pay per month rent. If you never have any income, you never need to pay taxes. Professional property management. Oh, maybe. I did know he had a house at the time, but it wasn't a house that he owned. I think he was paying to rent or lease the house. I don't know about 
home ownership at all. Please pay rent. <laughs> Okay, leisure and productive. This is like a, it says time at the top. It's kind of hard to read. Internet consume and then productive. So this, he was a heavy Reddit guy and the games that he played, uh, the last one that he was playing a whole bunch was Witcher 3. I think that was his primary game for a while. Like ever since it came out, he was playing that for the most part. He did play Han and Dota with me and Star Wars Old Republic. He played a Jedi Counselor named Stoya. Yeah. Yes, yes, after that, Stoya. Contribute to the house family chores, money, uh, objective identification, goal setting, improve self. Read, games, physical workout, walk, lift. So kind of like your standard decision tree. Yeah. I see you're a man of culture as well. Okay, we'll move. We'll move over here, the left side. The cable of this webcam is hecking me up. I don't know if this is a username password for something, so don't look at this. I don't know what it's for. If you do know what it's for, tell me. Finance, cash flow, budget. Oh, I already showed that. Cyclic AMP? Maybe he was high when he did that. It's like drawn over with multiple different colors of dry erase marker. R camp. It's kind of what it looks like from a distance. And then this was the, the wheel that I drew when I was there. What is that Stoya? Maybe someone can whisper it to you. It's kind of Monka TOS. She's a adult person. Well, it used to be. This is a, it looks like a random doodle. I should zoom in. He's got a series of triangles and circles with dashes on the sides. It's also possible that his younger brother Lucas drew some of these. The handwriting and stuff is all his. I can tell by the way that it looks, but some of these doodles, it's possible that they're his brother. Harness Bay, Inverto, Optimus Lanyard. He had been doing a lot of uh, rock climbing, like at the rock climbing gyms and stuff, and bouldering, which was really fun for him. I know that one of the points of uh, sadness and one of the risk factors for his suicide was he had a bunch of different stuff that fell apart simultaneously so he had to cancel his rock climbing membership because he lost his job and he also changed his antidepressant medication and i think there were a couple other things at the same time he did have a firearm and he had diabetes and he had a a history of trauma in his life so if you're looking at the the risk factors, he had almost all of them, I think. He wasn't in the military. I think that was one of the few ones he didn't have. But yeah, the, the thing about the experience of that is I had heard that it was during a panic attack where you're not in a rational state in that sense. So I don't think this was a like a slow decline and then you you end your life kind of a thing. I think it was a moment of chaos where a bad decision was made kind of a thing. That was my impression. It's hard for me to fully know. <clears throat> but I do know he had major depression since he was about 18. And he was over 30 at this point. 
It's a rune of power. It is now. I want it. I want to earn it. He has below that. This was a cool quote. Let's see if the webcam will reach. I don't know how legible this is from where I'm holding it, but I'll read it to you. We were making people better by making them better people. Write your grand political letter. Bridge the gap. Both sides of the aisle. We just want national stability. That's really nice. He was a left-leaning person, but, I mean, currently the, the problem in U.S. politics is the polarization, so I think that's sort of his commentary on the polarization. Did we share thoughts about future families? What do you mean? Like, if either of us wanted to sire children, raise kids and stuff? So the next thing he has is bicycle handlebars and seat equals question mark miles 50. He likes cycling a lot more than I did. I never really got into cycling. We both trained running together. He did the half marathon at White Rock in Dallas and I did the full marathon and it was the worst possible weather it was like just above freezing by maybe one degree and it was raining which was awful but yeah credit to him for doing that this bottom stuff I think is his work I've looked at this a bit, but I'm not sure. Springtime research objectives. Look for jobs in Colorado. Look for apartments. Residence requirements for in-state. I do know he wanted to move out of Texas. We lived in Texas, Canada, and Washington State. And I think the happiest time for him was when we were in Washington State. Canada was fine, but it was kind of inconvenient with the, like, moving money across the border and also not being Canadian citizens and stuff. So we would have to double back. For a U.S. citizen, you can stay for six months without a visa before you have to go back. But he did another drawing here. I don't think this is... A work thing? He has a bunch of cool designs. Does anyone know what these mean? It's a mystery. He's a pretty mysterious dude. Twenty seventeen dry ran for twenty eighteen. I don't know what that means. Do you know what these it says I E I C W P D L and V. It looks like he's trying to solve some puzzle, but I don't know what it is. Well, yeah. Pokemon codes, maybe. For the location of treasure chest, it's Morse code. Oh, sweet. Well, now we know. I think he knew Morse code. He had a bunch of random skills. I have like nowhere close to as many 
random ass skills that he did. Pokemon cave codes are braille, which is a rectangle that's too wide and three high. Sweet. But yeah, that's the the state of the board. I didn't have it for a long time because it's massive and it wouldn't fit in Pat's car or my car, so we couldn't bring it down to Austin. So it was at Pact's parents' house. They came and picked it up in their pickup truck. Hell yeah, brother. And took it to their place, but that's in North Texas. So they brought it down for my birthday this year. Did he play D&D? &D? Yes, he did. He played Vampire the Masquerade. I think that was his main one. Cheers, Knight Rider. Pick up truck. <laughs> Neuro Cowboy K. Kona in the chat. He played a fuck ton of Skyrim. And he modded it a bunch. This was more when Skyrim was newer. I don't think he had played it in the past couple years since his passing, but when it first came out, he played it through and it, our personality difference showed quite a bit with the way that we approached Skyrim because I would go for a couple key quest lines like Usually if I do a Skyrim playthrough, I'll do Dark Brotherhood, Thieves Guild to get a bunch of awesome loot, Mages Guild, and then I'll do the main quest. And I don't do a bunch of the other side quests and stuff like that. He's the kind of guy who like almost never do the main quest. Sometimes he'll accidentally make some progress on it, but he's really content to just move around the world and do the next random thing that's in front of you. Pact is the same way as that. Excited to see how you incorporate this in the future. Yeah, I think I want to use this for classes. So I've done quite a few of the classes that got promoted in the Blizzard launcher recently. I would like to do this and probably have a few like pre-prepared maybe like map layouts or something and then I draw on top of that to talk about like how you should manage your army or take certain objectives on the map and that kind of thing. Hasn't played since its passing? I meant two years prior to his passing. Dude, how, how metal would it be if he was like, he was a ghost in the machine playing Skyrim still. What do you think happens when you die? You just go into your Skyrim save. You know, that wouldn't be the worst. I guess it depends on how good you are at Skyrim. He played StarCraft some. He was Silver Protoss. He didn't really like the the high stress of StarCraft. I think a lot of people are like that. Will you preserve or erase anything? I'm gonna erase the whole thing. I took pictures of everything. So it is preserved. The information of what it is is preserved. He would want it to be used. What if you don't save? Then don't die. Be very careful. Watch your step. Can you show some of the other drawings? I showed them earlier. There was like... Sorry. There's this bottom left corner. 
Someone was saying Morse code or unfolded D and D die or something. I did not know. I just thought they were like cool shapes and stuff. And then I drew this wheel to represent eightfold path. And there's this doodle up here. But we don't know what that is, I don't think. And then there's this looks like a torch or a pineapple. And this kind of honeycomb sort of thing that he has something about void next to it. By the void. I don't know. Well, I don't know, dude. Eightfold path from Buddhism, yes. It's a flaming pineapple.